assumptions. There are common assumptions for both business and commercial aircraft. And then we'll get into the detail of the actual market forecast for both business aircraft and commercial aircraft. So our models, are, as I said, are economic models. Uh, one of the primary uh, drivers of our models is uh, gross domestic product, GDP. And as you can see from the graph uh, behind me, we've actually had quite a significant adjustment in our forecast for GDP for our 20-year forecasts compared to the previous year. Uh, unfortunately, the world GDP has lost um, around 1.5 trillion of value uh, since our last 20-year forecast. And you can see that we've highlighted on the graph where most of that uh, GDP has been lost. And it's in the very short term. Uh, so we're really seeing that the economy has not uh, picked up as we would have uh, forecast last year, uh, both for our business and for our commercial aircraft forecast. So a very short-term concentration, but still a significant impact over the 20-year uh, period of our forecast as we have uh, moved our GDP forecast on from 3.3% uh, to 3.2% still over our 3% uh, level that we continue uh, to monitor. Um, consistent with what we've been saying for a, a period of time, we continue to see the strength of the emerging economies uh, in the world GDP forecast. So you can see here the actual leaders of uh, GDP in our forecast being India and China, uh, closely followed by Latin America, the Middle East and Russia. Uh, what you do see is uh, Europe, unfortunately, uh, lagging the rest of the world in terms of GDP growth, um, and even uh, a growth that is uh, below 2%. North America, while we're seeing becoming stronger in the short term, uh, over the 20-year period, is showing 2.6% uh, of GDP growth. One of our other uh, significant factors in our model is oil price. Uh, and yet again, another indicator that has moved quite significantly. So in the last number of years, we have not seen large movements in our forecast of oil price over a 20-year period. <coughs> However, this year for the 2012 forecast, we actually have an increase uh, from an average of $107 per barrel to $126, so an 18% jump in the actual price of oil over that period of time. And that's had quite a significant impact primarily on our commercial aircraft forecast. As you can imagine, oil price is a major driver of airline profitability. Therefore, any movement in oil price um, tends to impact our commercial aircraft uh, forecast more significantly. Of course, whilst we try to um, model many factors in our market forecast and we try to adjust for qualitative factors as well. There are a number of events which could impact uh, the outcome of our forecast, either positively or negatively. Uh, on the positive side, uh, business aircraft very much impacted by wealth creation and therefore the number of billionaires in the world and the number of high net worth individuals who would be making a purchase of a business aircraft. For commercial aircraft, the acceleration of uh, the middle class and therefore the propensity to travel. Um, if we see an acceleration, that would have a positive impact to our current forecast. As well as for both business and commercial aircraft, the acceleration of economic trade and technological breakthrough. So we do see the growth of trade helping both commercial and business aircraft. Um, as uh, business people need to move uh, to do their business. And uh, the technological breakthrough really leading to the replacement of existing obsolete aircraft or in business aircraft, uh, the tendency to replace uh, the business aircraft every five to 10 years. Unfortunately, in 2011, we did see a number of events which uh, impacted not only the world economy, um, and therefore our overall forecast uh, and we continue to monitor how these events might trigger uh, in our forecast going forward. Whether they are geopolitical events, uh, terrorism events, national, disaster, natural disasters, which unfortunately we have seen a number of, um, as well as moves by governments uh, if they were 
to close their borders to trade, um, or in fact uh, the, their own economy and how they're performing. So they will lead to lower aircraft sales, um, both for commercial aircraft and uh, business aircraft as well. Uh, and in fact then the decreased aircraft utilization which uh, would impact uh, services primarily over that period of time. So quite a large number of factors uh, impacting our market forecast. So I'm sure you're interested to hear well, what actually is the forecast um, for the 20 years. So if we start with business jets. Uh, the business jet market itself has continued to progress uh, from the downturn. Uh, industry orders were up in 2011 compared to 2010. However, however deliveries remain relatively flat and I'll actually uh, show you that this morning. Uh, some of the market indicators that uh, you and we track uh, to give us a feeling on how the uh, market is moving. Uh, we did see some favorable trends with pre-owned inventory levels coming down uh, and residual values uh, bottoming out. Uh, which is good news for the aircraft, uh, the aircraft industry overall. And we did see increasing uh, fleet utilization both in the US and Europe. Uh, of course, the large category market, the market in which we have our Global Express units, very strong, um, unlike some of the other segments in, in business aircraft. As I've mentioned, you'll continue to hear through this morning uh, the strengthening of some emerging markets and their, the impact that they're having on the market forecast. We did see in 2011 and the start of 2012 the U.S. market strengthening, uh, but particularly Asia being very active in business aircraft acquisition, uh, and in particular the Chinese market. Europe unfortunately continued uh, to be weak during that period. And I will share with you this morning uh, our own leadership position uh, overall for business jets. So if we look in a little bit more detail at the actual market drivers themselves, uh, you can see them mentioned here, whether it's uh, wealth creation, globalization of trade, the emerging markets and their influence on the forecast, our new aircraft programs, as well as the replacement demand and accessibility overall for our customer base. So on wealth creation, on wealth creation, um, as I mentioned, GDP is a key driver of our market forecast. And for business aircraft, the number, number of high net worth individuals, usually uh, estimated as the number of billionaires uh, in the world. Uh, so business aircraft growth is highly dependent on wealth creation. And at a growth in excess of 3%, that is contributing to the significant increase in uh, business aircraft fleet that will be forecast over the next 20 years. The globalization of trade has been that business aircraft as a productivity tool is being used for. It's being used to link uh, further markets than before. And that really speaks a lot to what we see as the growth in the large category segment. Uh, because those aircraft are being uh, increasingly used to link uh, markets and routes of trade uh, that were not previously served or not served today uh, by commercial aircraft. Um, of course, emerging markets, uh, significant business aircraft potential, I'll show you the penetration rates that we have tracked historically, uh, and you'll see that uh, we have a lot of runway ahead of us in terms of putting business aircraft into emerging markets. Traditionally, a new aircraft program stimulate demand. It's a replacement cycle of five to 10 years for business aircraft. And uh, with that replacement cycle, the number of new aircraft programs tends to generate uh, new demand. And we'll share with you some of the programs that we, of course, are, are building to meet that demand. Uh, replacement aircraft, there is a worldwide installed fleet of 14,700 aircraft uh, that will need to be replaced over the period of time. Of course, we see different regulations um, that continue to change and evolve over time, which require some, um, which will require some replacement, as well as then the effect of the new aircraft programs. And 
accessibility here refers to the many different ways in which you can access business aviation today, whether that's through full ownership, fractional ownership, charters, or gem card programs, or many of the other different ways in which you can actually uh, access that service. So all of those different business models contributing to the business aircraft demand. So overall, market drivers showing uh, positive trends, uh, showing positive trends uh, both in the most recent past and then uh, over the 20 year period. I mentioned deliveries, orders had increased in 2011. Uh, but deliveries have been re relatively flat. Here you can actually see the data. So uh, not quite, <coughs> not quite um, as significant increases for the last three years. We've been tracking pretty much the same level. But you can see the peak uh, that was reached in 2008. So quite a significant difference uh, for business aircraft since the peak in 2008. Pre-owned inventory, something that uh, we all track. You can see here the uh, percentage of all aircraft um, that are available, as well as those uh, for in-production aircraft. Again, the peak hitting around at the end of 2008, uh, really signaling uh, what we saw as uh, the recessionary period. So it has gradually reduced. So for in-production aircraft, a reduction from the peak of 13.8 to a 9.1% level, still not at the level that we saw at the start of 2008 at 5.6%. Uh, and of course our own positioning, we're very proud to be able to say that during that period of time we have increased our market share um, and continue to lead the business jet aviation uh, market with a 38% revenue share uh, compared to our competitors. One of the reasons that has contributed to that has been our product, uh, our product portfolio and the investments that we made to that product portfolio over time. And we're very pleased to be able to say that we continue to invest in our programs and development. With today, uh, seven programs in development. I think uh, Steve Rodolfi, if he was here, would kindly remind me that he is actually now delivering global 5000s and 6000s with uh, Vision Flight Decks. Uh, so we're very proud to have made that achievement in 2012. And then of course in 2013 we'll enter into service in the new Learjet 85, which most of you are familiar with. And most recently at EBS we announced our new Learjet 70, 75 programs, which will also enter into service in 2013. So a busy 2013 uh, for business aircraft. And then our, our very large development of the global 7,000 and 8,000 coming in 2016-2017. So quite an innovative product lineup uh, for one market over the next period of five years. I mentioned uh, business jet pen penetration rates and the fact that we have a lot of runway ahead of us. Here I have quite a complex graph uh, and very detailed complex calculations uh, support this assumption. Uh, if you can attach your eyes to the blue line, that is the, uh, or the circle, which encompasses the blue line. That's a, the average growth path of many of the economies as they have adopted business aviation. This is a calculation based on the GDP per capita, as well as the fleet of business aviation per 100 million of population. So you can see that despite differences with different economies, uh, that there is a typical growth um, path for many of those economies as they begin to adopt um, business aircraft. And you can also see that North America with the largest installed base um, has clearly the largest fleet per GDP of capita and uh, sets the historic trend for what we can measure the more emerging economies and how they are adopting business aviation. So with this, it allows us to identify where the potential markets are and the extent of those markets. So lots of opportunities uh, and lots of opportunities in emerging markets going forward. Uh, as we continue to see their GDP growth accelerate and be in excess of that in our more traditional markets, as well as the barriers to actually using business aviation decrease in those countries whether it's infrastructure or regulation uh, that permit the removal of those barriers. So I feel as if I should have a
drum roll at this point because this is, in fact, uh, the, uh, the business aircraft forecast for the 20 year period. You can see uh, the growth uh, in the fleet very significantly. Uh, and overall, uh, deliveries of 24,000 uh, business jets during that period um, of 20 years, with the, I guess, a uh, more of those deliveries coming in the last 10 years of the period. And that really reflects what I highlighted earlier on and the short term impact of uh, the GDP change uh, in the 2012 forecast. Um, however, 9,800 is a significant number of deliveries in a 10 year period, particularly given the size of the fleet uh, to start with. So, overall, a fleet of 31,500 business jets. Uh, by 2031. The 24,000 business jet deliveries are valued at $648 billion over the next 20 years. And you can see here that uh, the large portion of those deliveries and the value, 45%, uh, belongs to the large category. 37% for the medium category and 18% for light business jets. So growth in all segments uh, over the 20-year period. And again, a value of uh, 648 billion in total. Geographically, uh, the largest single market will continue to be North America. It has the single largest installed base today. Uh, and therefore, we see it as being the single largest uh, market for deliveries over that 20-year period. Europe does have the number two position today and will also be uh, number two over that period. But interestingly, uh, China has moved up to number three in the business aircraft forecast as we see an accelerated adoption of business jet usage in China, albeit today from a very low and solid base. So I've covered at a very high level the business aircraft forecast. All of the details are available on our website and the detail of the forecast giving you some of the parameters by geography and uh, some more detail on the market drivers themselves. So let's have a look at the commercial aircraft forecast. So there has been uh, some good news with commercial aircraft. Uh, traffic demand has remained strong and we did see gains <coughs> recovering uh, from the downturn. So in our commercial airline customers, uh, we did see profitability. That was a, a very positive news. Um, however, still continues to be a lot of uh, volatility, uh, whether that's uh, due to oil price, um, labor scope clauses, which uh, determine the expansion of commercial aircraft, particularly in the US and European markets, which are the two largest installed base. So more uh, mixed trends uh, for the commercial aircraft industry overall. However, we remain very positive about the, about the industry and very positive about the portfolio of products that we have to meet the demand that we see coming from the commercial aircraft industry. So, like business aircraft, let's have a look at some of the market drivers for commercial aircraft. So, economic growth continues to um, influence our model. Um, air travel demand from our customers is directly linked to economic growth and the strength of the economy overall. Um, and uh, we continue to see economic growth over that 20-year uh, period, albeit at a reduced level from last year. As I mentioned, oil price, we've increased our market forecast, the average 20-year price per barrel this year um, to $127, so quite a significant increase. Uh, this has the positive effect of uh, requiring the acceleration of the retirement of older commercial aircraft, less fuel efficient aircraft, uh, and requiring more fuel efficient aircraft to meet the demand. However, higher oil prices do have a negative effect on the economy overall, and consequently on uh, demand for airline travel and on airline profitability. And in fact, Oil price is now beginning to make up a much more significant portion of airline profitability than labor costs. So we're seeing uh, in the region of 34% of the operating cost of an airline as being actually linked directly to the price of jet fuel. 
which of course uh, is linked to the price of crude oil overall. So a very significant component of their line profitability linked to the oil price. And why we continue to see the volatility or the impact of geopolitical events on the oil price, you start to see uh, different forecasts of our line profitability over the 20 year period. Emerging markets, a uh, key influencer in the market forecast, and you'll see that particularly when I talk about the geographical demand for commercial aircraft over the next 20 year period. Labour trends, I referred to those earlier on, with scope clauses in the US and Europe. Quite a significant um, amount of discussions ongoing currently in the US with the US airlines uh, with their labour unions with respect to scope clauses. Uh, the relaxation of scope clauses is something uh, that would continue to develop the trend to the move towards larger regional jets. Uh, allowing more larger regional jets to be um, to be flown by um, mainline carriers and their providers. Uh, retirements. Our fleet of uh, commercial aircraft today is quite an old fleet. Um, there are a number of categories that have uh, aircraft in excess of 20 years average life, um, and that will be an important uh, trend going forward as we continue to see people. Uh, actually replacing those with much more fuel efficient aircraft. So a large number of the commercial aircraft forecast, a very important number is actually the number of retirements, which will drive uh, the replacement cycle. So really the two factors, the number of retirements, which is driving the number of replacements, and then the, number, the amount of growth uh, in addition to that. Uh, environmental regulations, a little bit like oil price, it has its positives and negatives. Um, environmental regulations, as they move to become more stringent, will require aircraft that can actually meet or exceed those uh, requirements, and therefore the retirement of older aircraft will lead to fleet modernization, which is important uh, overall in the forecast. Uh, but unfortunately, environmental regulation has become something that uh, airlines experience as an impact on their profitability, uh, whether that's through environmental fees or through different schemes which they must comply with. Uh, and therefore, overall, it is negative to the airline profitability and continued sustainability. Just to perhaps look in a little bit more detail at uh, some of the factors I mentioned, um, we talk about emerging markets. Uh, perhaps one of the things that's most important for commercial aviation is the growing middle class population and therefore the propensity to travel. You can see here on the left hand side that uh, in terms of consumer spending by the middle class measured in trillions of dollars, moving from a level of 21.3 trillion in 2009 to 55.7 million, uh, more than doubling by the end of the forecast period of <coughs> And in particular, you can see the red bar, just need to check it is red, uh, the red bar showing the actual growth in uh, the emerging economies, and in particular, Asia Pacific. Uh, quite stunning uh, growth uh, there in the middle class. So deliveries, uh, they're well below past averages. Uh, the industry in the 20 to 149 seats, you can see, has been at quite a consistent level of deliveries from 2002 onward to 2008. And then we saw the impact of the recession with reduced deliveries. And still we remain 32% below uh, the average number of deliveries in that period. Once again, we're very proud to say we continue to be the market leader with our jet and turboprop family uh, with a 42% market share in the uh, regional aircraft uh, 40 to 99 seat category. Uh, again, the geographic, the map looks quite similar to what we saw for business aircraft. The difference for commercial aviation is that China, in fact, is number two single largest market in the 20 year forecast with North America continuing to be number one due to the size of the installed base. Uh, Europe and Russia and CIS 
has a slightly larger number of deliveries, but only because we've combined uh, all of those countries into one region. So China uh, remaining our second largest market in the 20-year forecast, uh, and a very important uh, market overall for commercial aviation. And I think it's important to note uh, Asia-Pacific, uh, the remainder of the region, also um, at number four, the largest the fourth largest region, so a lot of growth forecast uh, in non-traditional areas that uh, Bombardier would traditionally have sold to. So once again, having a look at our market forecast from a fleet in 2011 of uh, 3,600 aircraft in the 2,149 seat segment, uh, going to a fleet um, of 1,200 for the 20 to 59 seat. Uh, and you can see that uh, here we do not anticipate many deliveries in this category. Uh, this really is a category that we see a large number of retirements as we continue to see the trend moving towards larger regional uh, aircraft. In the 60 to 99 seat category, uh, growing from a fleet of 2,500 today to a total fleet of 6,800, uh, a significant number of deliveries in this category, 5,600, and we see that category as being a split with regional jets and turboprops. Regional jets are taking 52% of those deliveries and turboprops taking 48%. Uh, many less retirements in the 60 and 99 seat category. And then the 100 to 149 seat category growing from a fleet, the largest fleet today of 5,100 to a fleet of 9,000 with uh, deliveries in that segment overall of 6,900. Here again you see a similar trend to the 20, seat, 20 to 59 seat segment with uh, a larger number of retirements of uh, very old aircraft. This is the category that has the uh, oldest fleet overall, so 3,000 retirements in that period. So overall for our market forecast for commercial aircraft, 12,800 deliveries uh, in the 20-year market forecast. Perhaps one point just to mention, because I did mention the split between regional jets and turboprops, uh, a very important split as we, uh, we continue to offer products in all three segments uh, and across regional jets and turboprops. It is the importance of oil price uh, to the split of regional jets and turboprops in our forecast. So you can see that with the increase in oil price, the value proposition of the turboprop is enhanced uh, overall. And historic experience would tell us that we've seen that with the number of turboprop orders in uh, 2011 uh, and continue to forecast that uh, over the next 20 year period. So, in summary, we, are, we have issued our market forecast for both business jets and commercial aircraft. Uh, for business aircraft, the 20-year forecast is 24,000 deliveries with $648 billion, uh, with the, the largest proportion of that belonging to the large category of aircraft, 45% of the revenues. And overall, the fleet will uh, be 31,000 